Welcome. Today, I would like to talk a little bit about foundation. And um, with that, I'll open up with 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, where it says, For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge self-control. And then the list goes on. But I want to stop at faith. Add to your faith. Now, this could be a process of a year, two years, three years, four years, five years, six years. It's not something that happens overnight. Now, in the beginning of my walk for about a month, I was watching everything on Christian television, the Word Network, TBN, the Church Channel, you name it. And then the Lord planted me in Joseph Prince Ministries. And he said, the only thing that I want you to do is I want you to listen to Joseph and I want you to read the word. I don't want you to listen to anybody else, but Joseph and read the word. So for two to three years, I was only listening to Joseph and the scriptures. That was it. And then my cousin comes along and he says, have you ever heard of Charles Spurgeon? And I'm like, no, I don't know the man. So he's like, well, I'm gonna send you this website and I want you to read through the link. So I'm, I'm reading through it hesitantly. And as I'm reading through it, everything in my spirit began to leap. And I'm just like, I got to find out more about this dude. So I end up getting the book, um, All of Grace. Highly recommend that, John. Highly. So I'm reading All of Grace. The one thing that I absolutely love about Spurgeon is that he does a wonderful job of tearing down self-righteousness. He does such a wonderful job of showing you that you are saved, not because of anything that you've done or anything that you will do. You are saved by the blood of Christ alone. And I love that about him. But to go back, it was important that he took that time to establish me in Christ, that for two to three years, he was pointing to Jesus and Jesus alone, and then validating it in scripture. It was Jesus and Jesus alone and validating it in scripture. And the reason why he did that is because he knew there are areas in you that I want to touch and I want to heal. I am going to show you areas of your unbelief and your self-righteousness that aren't that pretty. And when I do, I need you to understand that I love you, that I am pleased with you, and I am never going to leave you. And I want you to know this so that as we are going through these things together, you will enjoy me in the process. You won't run, but you will lean in me knowing that I am more than able to save and that I, might, I am more than able to bring wholeness to these areas in your life. Scripture tells us that he desires that we are unified in the faith and in Christ Jesus so that we are not tossed to and fro, back and forth by every wind of doctrine. The issue is not behavior. The issue is the doctrine. What is it that we are believing? I have met brothers and sisters in Christ that you see the sadness in their eyes. They believe that they're forgiven of all of their sins, but yet they believe that God still holds some of their sins against them. They believe that they are saved by the blood of Jesus, but they're also uncertain to whether they'll make it to heaven or not. They don't know if God has left them. They don't know if God is pleased with them. And the reason being is because there's so much mixture going on within our messages. Mixture only breeds confusion. There's no life in it. So if there's truth mixed in with a little bit of lies, you lose them both. What we are hearing is so important. At the time, I didn't understand why he wanted to pull everything away and just wanted me to listen to just Joseph. And, and confirming what was being taught in the scripture. And I understand now, it's hard when you have all of these different voices that don't quite believe the same thing speaking at you at once. Is salvation eternal or is it contingent on my behavior? Which one is it? And the foundation is so important. Spurgeon actually said that every error that we have, it, it all trickles back down to um, our understanding of our forgiveness. That's why we're so confused. If you look at it, even in scripture, it says that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, and he can't expect to receive anything from God. Why? 
because this man can't get a footing on nothing. <laughs> he's here, he's there. He's so confused. Why? Because of the different winds of doctrine. God wants us to understand that we are a forgiven people, that our identity is wrapped up in Christ and Christ alone, that every promise in Christ is a yes and an amen, so that whenever he begins to show us the areas of our lives that he wants to touch, we won't run, we won't hide, but we will walk with him through it, enjoying the moment. It is a process. If you are someone who feels confused right now, I would just recommend that you would find someone that is preaching to the Christ in you, someone that points to Christ and Christ alone and your new identity, someone who is unpacking the beauty of what Christ has done on the cross for you and trust the Holy Spirit to begin to add people to you. But it's so important that you know what it is he has done in order to move forward. So with my final words, I just wanna say that God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness, but it all comes through the revelation of Christ. I pray that you are blessed in your hearing, and as always, grace and peace. I hope I got everything. <laughs>